ABC News contributor and USA Today sports columnist Christine Brennan. Christine, thank you so much for joining us tonight. First, I have to get your reaction to the end of this six-year battle between the athletes and U.S. soccer. Would you call this a favorable outcome? Absolutely. A favorable outcome for the women and the men went along, which is a real statement about where young men are today in the era of Title IX. They're Title IX males supporting women athletes as never before. Um, this is a huge victory for U.S. women's soccer. These are the icons going back to Mia Hamm and Brandi Chastain and, and Brianna Scurry and, and Julie Foudy to, of course, now Megan Rapino and Abby Wambach earlier. I mean, these are the people who are, are bringing fans into the stands and bringing uh, eyeballs uh, to the internet or uh, to television screens. And, and they're the most successful four Olympic gold medals, four World Cups, and they weren't being paid anywhere near what the men are being paid. Now it's a statement to the rest of the world. Most countries do not treat women's soccer anywhere near how the United States even was before. Uh, the misogyny and the sexism around the world is extraordinary in the sport. And the United States has said today, enough is enough. And, and as you said, that wasn't the case just here in the U.S., but around the world and not just with soccer, but sports at large. So what do you think that this means for the fight for equal pay across all professional sports, including the National Women's Soccer League and beyond? This is a landmark moment. This is something that now everyone can look to and say, look, look at what happened here uh, and maybe move forward. I'm not sure that there are there are different. It's apples to oranges in some ways when you look at pro leagues, because if they are, um, obviously, this is capitalism, and if they're making more money, the NBA obviously has been around a lot longer than the WNBA. When you consider that the Men's World Cup started in 19. 30. That was the first time men played soccer in a World Cup. And the women's didn't start till 1991. That's a 61-year head start. And now, at least in the United States, they've caught up. A few other countries are talking about trying to make things more equal. The vast majority couldn't care less about women's soccer, even today. And this is the United States saying, uh, look at us. And so it has to have a ripple effect. It has to reverberate through other sports. Will it happen tomorrow? No. But is it possible it will happen in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, especially as more women athletes then become uh, consumers and want to buy tickets and want to bring their daughters to watch uh, the, these female role models? This shows the way, but as you said, pointing out the, the NBA compared to the WNBA, there are some factors where you're comparing apples to oranges and things are likely not going to be the exact same. What do you think it would take? How do, how do we work around that? Yeah. I certainly think that you declare victory on women's sports as we approach the 50th anniversary of Title IX next month. I think you declare victory with participation and with the steps that have been taken so far. The glass is definitely half full, not half empty. Today is the greatest day to be a woman in sports until tomorrow. That's what progress looks like. It's not as fast as many of us would like it to be, but this day, equality, equal bonuses, equal pay, a pool of money for both World Cups that the players will make equally, uh, and even the men getting childcare. The women had that. Now the men get that. Uh, and obviously some of the sponsors who wanted to associate only with the women's game, well, the men will now benefit as well. One American team, all these young people growing up in a very different world than their parents or grandparents. And it's the same with all the Olympic sports, in addition to soccer, swimming, gymnastics, track and field, figure skating, et cetera. And the idea is to pay men and women equally because, of course, a lot of the stars in these Olympic sports are women. Yeah, and Christine, I love your outlook. You said today is the greatest day to be a woman in sports until tomorrow. That is progress. And finally, I want to ask you, what about for women across all workplaces? As you are well aware, equal, play, equal pay is not just an issue for athletes. What happens after this? Sports often leads us to national conversations that we have to have. And whether it be after Super Bowl or whether it be Colin Kaepernick and, and the important issues that he, of course, has raised, um, sports takes us to that place and is almost a common denominator. And so I think because of this news and how big a deal it is and the worldwide attention to it, my guess is that uh, there will be people in workplaces tomorrow, men and women, uh, maybe talking about this. Maybe there'll be a woman who's fighting an equal pay battle at an insurance company or at a factory who will have a little bit more bounce in her step as she looks at her heroes 
the Megan Rapinos of the world and, and says, okay, they can do that. I can do it as well. And again, it's something you can go to a position, person in a position of authority in a company, and you can say, look what just happened in soccer. Look at the effort that was made, not only by the women who really worked hard for all these years, and it's not just six, seven years, it's it's three decades of fighting really for equal pay all the way back to the 90s, um, but also, and even the 80s, to be honest, um, but also um, it's the men who have agreed that the women deserve that. That is a watershed moment when you've got the guys saying, yes, we want to share this money with the women. They deserve it. They win more than we do. They're better known than we are. We accept that. We honor that. And we want to be a part of a partnership with them. Let's hope it takes uh, over not only in workplaces around the country, but around the world on playing fields where right now girls and women are not getting anywhere near the kind of attention and the respect that they deserve that U.S. soccer and the men and women of, of the sport are now being shown today. From sports fields and courts around the world, Christine Brennan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.